welcome. Behind these walls, brilliant machines are working together. They're using software for good, software to serve humans. Strange, yet undeniably brilliant. We just heard a powerful uh, interview with uh, juror B-29 from the George Zimmerman trial, Maddie, uh, and her reaction to the latest developments yesterday, allegations of domestic violence by George Zimmerman, by his own wife, in a tape of 911 tape she made yesterday. Joining me now is former prosecutor Faith Jenkins and Florida defense attorney Ken Padowitz, MSNBC legal analyst Lisa Bloom. Thank you all for joining me. Thank you. I, I want to hear you. from everyone, starting with Lisa. What's your reaction to what Maddie, juror B-29, just said to me? You know, it's such a heartbreak listening to her because she knows in her heart, she says, that George Zimmerman was guilty, but she felt that the law prevented her from finding that. And she doesn't call the other jurors bullies, but she says that they had more knowledge of the law than she did, that they had they knew lawyers. And it sounds as though they tried to use that knowledge to talk her out of what she really knew. You know, the problem here is that the jury instructions were so confusing that if they had been clearer, this, these, this jury, which was initially half to convict and have to acquit could have come back with a conviction. If the prosecution in closing arguments had walked the jurors clearly through the manslaughter charge and showed that it really wasn't that high of a level of proof, showed how the evidence did fit into the manslaughter charge, they could have gotten the conviction. You know, I see these jurors as victims of the system just as much as everybody else in this case was. The system really failed in this case. Ken? Lisa just articulated it in an excellent way. I mean, that's exactly what I heard this juror say, that it comes down to the law, and the law is extremely confusing. It's, it's as clear as mud in the state of Florida, and especially when it comes to the Stand Your Ground law, which was incorporated in to the jury instructions, it's extremely confusing. And you could hear the disappointment in this juror's, uh, you know, words as she describes how, you know, George Zimmerman is, is there smiling, and, and now, again, he's, he's attracted this kind of attention again with police and, and with 911 calls, and, and how disappointed she is that she believed in her heart that, she, that he was guilty of a crime at the trial, but she just felt the law didn't allow her to come back with, with what she thought was justice. And so it's, it's very disheartening to hear her say that, but I think she articulated it in a very emotional, you know, meaningful way that most people will understand. Faith. And, you know, she's stepping outside of the bubble she was in with being a part of a sequestered jury. And now with this other incident that just happened yesterday, you're seeing a bigger picture of who George Zimmerman is. This is a person who has an awful lot of contact with the police, but is always playing the role of the chronic victim. He's never at fault. No blame, no shame, no fault, no consequences. And you see that repeatedly. And she made a comment about what Shelly Zimmerman said. Shelly Zimmerman said, I don't know what he's capable of. When we look at his history, yeah. we know what he's capable of. 2005 domestic violence case, shortly after that assaulting a police officer, having to take anger management classes that apparently didn't work, killing a teenager, and now repeatedly using bad judgment, speeding, he doesn't have to speed, taking pictures with gun manufacturers, and now getting the into another... The manufacturer gun, he killed a teenager. Yes, and now getting into another domestic violence incident where you know you're being watched. Even if someone else starts something, you stand down, you walk away. He knows who he is and the consequences now of him getting into another we're talking about who he is, Faith and, and, and uh, Lisa and Ken. The Lake uh, Mary police told the New York Times, quote, George Zimmerman said he has no gun on him and we haven't found a gun. The cops said they didn't find a gun, but Zimmerman's own lawyer said he had a gun the whole time. Listen to this. There was no gun, no gun found. We searched him. We searched him physically. There was no weapon, nor was there any weapon involved. Did you search his car? We did not search his vehicle. Did George touch his gun, pull his gun, move towards his gun during this disturbance? No. No, he had his gun. He was armed. And what he did, like anyone with a responsible gun ownership, he made sure it didn't go anywhere from the outside. He made sure that he put his hand to secure the gun was holstered under his shirt. It stayed there the whole time. So his lawyer said the gun was under his shirt the whole time. 
Yes. The police said they didn't find a gun. Was the lawyer lying on him? Was the police lying? Or did George ditch the gun somewhere? Because this is a blatant inconsistency, Faith. Right. And so it's not clear, but here's what we do know. When the police got there, originally Shelly Zimmerman said that he was threatening with, with a gun. He yes. had his hand on his gun. But when the police got there, she then said that she never saw the gun. They talked to other witnesses there, and they said they never saw a gun, and they searched him, and there was no gun on him. Now, it appears that the gun was in the car. Did he go and put the gun in the car before the police arrived? We don't know yet, but they did. They decided not to go search the vehicle because they didn't perceive any exigent circumstances, and they, they did not think they had probable cause to go and search the vehicle without a warrant because the witnesses but, said but they didn't Lisa, oh. then, then why, uh, yeah, right. why is the lawyer telling us exactly where the gun was? This is a huge issue. You know, usually it's the other way around. The police say that somebody had a gun, and the lawyer says, no, he didn't. In fact, the lawyer is now on tape saying that he did have a gun. And as far as exigent circumstances, yes, if George Zimmerman was objecting, but all the police had to do was ask him, may we search your car? We know how George Zimmerman is with the police. Sure, I'll <laughs> talk to you. Sure, search my car. This looks to me like another example of police incompetence when it comes to George Zimmerman. You mean to tell me that his wife is on the phone hysterical saying he's threatening me and my father with a gun? He just punched my father in the face. He just just destroyed my iPad. And they don't even ask him, can we search the car? I mean, this is completely outrageous to me. And by the way, Mark O'Mara said after the trial, George Zimmerman is always going to carry a gun. He's always yeah. facing death threats. People are always after him. He's got more reason to carry a gun. Of course he had a gun. He had it holstered behind him in the back of his pants with a shirt covering it. That's the way George Zimmerman packs a gun. Ken, when you look at the circumstances and he's continuing to do this, we're told now that the police have retrieved the iPad, the broken iPad, and maybe uh, there's some video on there. But when you hear this juror, Maddie, uh, almost pleading, let's do something about the law, which many of us are raising the question on stand your ground and other things. I mean, it, it, it is amazing to me how people would have to just be insensitive to not look at how tragic this whole thing is for all involved. Well, absolutely. I mean, that's the key word here, tragic. I mean, it, it is very tragic. It's tragic what happened to a teenager. It's tragic uh, that this is continuing in the public eye that is taking the resources of the community, police officers, having to leave their posts and leave other potential criminal criminal issues that they have to deal with and come deal again and again with George Zimmerman. So that is tragic. And, and clearly at the scene, the, you know, if, if there's a very good argument that there were exigent circumstances that the police could have looked in that vehicle for a gun since a gun had been originally reported and that this was a crime that was being reported of violence, domestic violence at the scene. So yep. tragedy is, is definitely something that could be described to this situation. Well, Faith, Ken, and Lisa, thank you very much. We are definitely going to be all over this. No, we're not trying to retry the case. We're trying to do what Maddie said, deal with the law and deal with equal protection under the law. We cannot not deal with that, particularly after hearing this interview tonight.